Hi everyone! In this video, we will review how to add dynamic food and beverage minimums to your locations, helping your team ensure pricing consistency across bookings, simplifying your workflow, and customizing your spending amounts for various booking scenarios at your venue. F&B minimums are customizable amounts that can be set up based on location, event style, room, time, and day of the week. This pricing customization recognizes that a minimum for a Friday night on the patio will significantly differ from a Monday afternoon in the dining room. Creating dynamic minimums within Triple Seat will eliminate the need to manually calculate and input a minimum amount for every booking. In Triple Seat, a booking is a series of related events that can span across multiple days and uses booking documents. We will show how to add dynamic minimums in settings and how to use them for events within a booking. To set up and use personalized minimums with bookings, you must use minimums at the event level. When minimums are created in settings, they will appear on the event level and automatically calculate and sum to the booking minimum. You have the ability to select which menu item categories should apply to dynamic F&B minimums, which we will cover in this video. To set up dynamic F&B minimums, I need to have the appropriate settings access. Heading into my settings page, I will click on advanced location settings and go to the F&B minimums tab. I first need to select a location from the dropdown. Next, I will choose an event style. If I select on premise or large party reservation, I will be prompted to select a specific room. Finally, I will select a rate type. I can choose from hourly or flat. I can only use one rate type per event style or room. For pickup and drop off catering, only a flat rate is permitted. I will set up the minimums for my main dining area for on premise events. Once I have selected my rate type, an F&B minimum grid will appear and I can begin adding amounts for each day of the week. I will click add to create a new minimum for Friday. I first need to provide a start time and end time for any minimum I create, as well as the dollar amount. I will create a minimum for my dinner hours, so I will put in my time frame and then type the minimum into the text box. While I can have multiple minimums within a day, minimums are not able to overlap. So when I go to add another minimum and click on the time frame, I will see that I am unable to choose any time between 5 p.m. and 11 p.m. I will create another minimum for Friday afternoon. I can also copy minimums from another day. Since I also offer minimums for dinner on Saturdays, I will copy my minimums from Friday to Saturday. To do that, I will navigate to Saturday, click Copy From, and select Friday. I can see Friday's minimums have been copied from Friday to Saturday. My F&B minimum for Saturday night is going to be more than Friday, so I will change the amount. If I need to delete any minimums, I can select the red trash can. When done, I want to make sure to save my changes before doing anything else. Once I press Save Changes, I can continue creating my minimums for other rooms or event styles. Once saved, these new dynamic F&B minimums will apply to newly created bookings only. No changes will be made to existing bookings. Now that minimums have been set up, when a booking is created and there is an F&B minimum for that location, event style, and room, the minimum will appear under financials for each event. Since I now have a minimum for events on Friday night and Saturday morning in the main dining room at Lakeview Grill, my minimums will automatically calculate for the Friday night wedding reception and Saturday morning brunch. When creating this booking, I will see a calculated button under the event financials for each event. When I scroll up to the top, the booking level F&B minimum will be grayed out, as I cannot use both event level and booking level minimums. Once the events within the booking are saved, the event minimums will automatically calculate and sum to the booking minimum. This sum will appear on the booking details page under financials as total F&B minimum. To view the F&B minimums for each event, I will head to the grid. 
I can add the F&B minimum column for an at-a-glance view of minimums for each event. The minimum column within the grid is view only. If I needed to make any changes that would affect the minimum, like changing the room or time, I need to do this on the event level. To adjust a minimum, I will head to the event details page of an individual event. Clicking this button next to the event will bring me there. On the event details page of an event, F&B minimum appears under event financials along with a calculated button. Clicking on this button will open a read-only pop-up of the F&B minimum tab in advanced location settings. This is a great tool to use if I am working on this event and my contact decides they need to change booking details that may impact the minimum. For example, if my contact was booked in the main dining room and later decides they prefer the lounge, I can simply click on this label rather than navigate back to settings to find out what the new minimum will be. If I make this change and F&B minimums are configured for this space, the minimums will be updated. If there is no minimum for this new space, the value remains unchanged. If a minimum has been manually entered, then that value will remain, regardless if any new event details would apply to a configured minimum in advanced location settings. Something to note. If I am making changes to event details that impact the minimum before I've created any documents, the total F&B minimum on the booking will automatically react to those changes. I will change the minimum by clicking Edit, manually adjusting the minimum to 4,000, and pressing Update. I can see that the minimum has updated on the event. Heading back to the Booking Details page, I can see that the total minimum has been updated to reflect this change. If I made that change after documents were created, the minimum would need to be updated manually in the billing widget. Since F&B minimums are set up on the event level, any changes that need to be made must be done on the individual event tab within the booking docs, not on the booking tab itself. To see how minimums work within documents, I will create booking documents for this booking. I will head to the docs tab and click to add a document. Clicking into the booking document template, I will scroll down to the billing widget on the booking tab. Since this is the overall booking document and my minimums are on the event level, the overall F&B minimum is locked here. Now I will navigate to an event tab and add some line items so that I can have some charges. Once charges have been added, I will scroll down to the billing widget to see the minimum for that event. I can see that $4,000 has automatically been generated for this event, and I can identify $1,775 has been met, and the guest has $2,225 to go. As a reminder, to change which menu item categories should apply to the minimum on an event within a booking, I can click the ellipses to expand the minimum line and select the categories. The categories selected will count towards meeting this F&B minimum. If I leave exclude from all totals checked off here, any unmet amount, so the 2,225 in my example, will be left out of the grand total and the estimated amount due. If I uncheck exclude from all totals, any unmet amount will roll into the grand total automatically and I can apply any taxes or fees on top of that unmet minimum as needed here. Rolling the unmet minimum into all totals is helpful as I won't need to go back and charge the guests at the end of their booking if they haven't met their minimum. To make changes to the billing widget for all newly created bookings, I need to edit the template in Settings, Documents, Booking Contract, and Event Order Template. Now let's go ahead and see how this looks for the guest. I will click Update on my document, and then click into a layout that has a billing widget, such as the contract. Clicking in the contract, I can see here that it is clearly laid out for my guest that the F&B minimum is 4,500 for both events total. This is what they've met, and this is what they have to go to meet the minimum for the booking. My documents are set up for the F&B minimum calculator to automatically appear when added to a booking. This is something that was set up in settings. If you would like the minimum calculator to default on documents, please reach out to our support team. I can also report on my minimums in the booking details report. I can customize this report and add my F&B minimums as a financial column. 
Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about adding and managing F&B minimums within bookings, please reach out to our support team, support at triplesuit.com or by clicking on the help questions button at the top right corner of any screen in Triple Seat.